So what's going on in the beginner's guide, exactly? A quick synopsis would put it like this. Game developer Davey Reedon walks us through a bunch of games that his friend Coda made, commenting on them and giving insights on what they tell us about Coda as a person. We learn about the friendship between Davey and Coda, and how Davey ultimately betrayed that friendship by showing Coda's games to people. We discover that Davey had altered the games, and that many of the insights he offered about Coda were actually projections of himself. Okay, but what was the point of the game? What was it trying to convey? One theory I've heard claims the message is that you can't understand people through the work they've done, the very thing Davey is trying to do in the game. Seems plausible, considering many of the insights Davey has about Coda are either fabrications or projections. In fact, the revelation in the tower level that Davey had been the one adding lampposts to Coda's games in an attempt to connect them all and give them an overarching meaning makes you wonder what else he could have changed. Like the entering and exiting games, the games both consist of the player walking along a stone path and past a sign. The first game sign says you are entering, the second says you are exiting. The games book and two other games, one where you crawl slowly up a flight of stairs to find a room filled with ideas for games, and one where you walk down a corridor to a dead end where Davy messes with the game's code to make the walls invisible, revealing a hidden world with intricate paths weaving all around you. The flow of the games works quite well, because as Davy points out, the two games convey the same message in the opposite way. So, uh, in the stairs game, a dull exterior concealed a rich interior. And then, in this level, a dull interior hides this fantastic outer world. Either way, I think that the point is the same. Is that most of the time, you don't get to know what you're missing. Or even that you're missing anything. But did Coda know ahead of time he'd be making these games to fit in that order? Or did Davy arrange them that way to better serve his message? In the course of the game, you come across a series of doors which act as a puzzle. The puzzle is a door that you flip a switch to open, and flip the same switch to close as you walk through. You end up in a dark space between the door you just closed, and the one you need to open. The switch for the next door is on the back of the door you just shut. Flip it and you're free. Multiple times throughout the game, you come across characters who have tried to solve the puzzle but failed, which seems surprising for how easy the puzzle is. One of the characters tells you that the puzzle is not meant to be solved, but that you can linger in the space between doors, and you'll understand why you'd want to soon enough. Then later you come across the house cleaning game. This game takes place in the space between doors. The large cropping of snowy land the house sits on is completely walled in, with a door behind and across from you. Coda intended the game to loop forever, but Davy eventually ends it, saying that you can't stay in the dark space for too long. You just can't. You have to keep moving. It's how you stay alive. Coda, on the other hand, exhibits an absurdist nature. His game is Sisyphusian, a task that keeps resetting, where the player finds comfort and meaning in the activity itself and not the completion of it. It seems to contradict what Davy said about the doors when they were first introduced, that the games were a way for Coda to grapple with and overcome certain things in his life, which he could then shut the door on and move on from. People are contradictory though, and context is important. The door puzzle can be a way for Coda to move past a certain period of his life, and the cleaning game can be representative of life in general and how Coda thinks it should be handled. Or it could be how Coda feels about personal growth. Like the character in the game says, One's house is a lot like one's soul. You take care of it, and it takes care of you. It's his way of expressing that there are always going to be issues we have to deal with in life. That we never stop growing and so we have to work to make sure we keep our souls clean. It's like the character said earlier, Whatever work you do, you have absolutely got to own it. Otherwise, it owns you. It is possible to gain some understanding of Coda through his work. It's just that Davy is projecting himself onto the work so much that he can't see anyone else. Maybe the real message of the game is to not project yourself onto everything that other people do, that they have their own things they're going through and their work won't necessarily reflect you. Maybe the message of the game isn't that you can't understand the artist through his work, but that the artist can't understand you through his work, that his work can only reflect him. That's why no other character in the game can figure out the door puzzle. It's the artist's problem, no one else's. And if you're not one for speculation, here's some more tangible evidence that real life Davy isn't against knowing artists through their work. And there's I mean, I'm never a moment that says this is like you're watching. But like me. that's what I'm that's what I'm trying to do is I'm I'm trying to, to put like a subjective lens on like my life. It's entirely possible that Coda's games had some type of meaning, but Davy was too self-obsessed to notice any meaning but what he ascribed them. Like with the lampposts. Davy was so desperate to connect all of Coda's games that he didn't realize that they already were connected with the door puzzle. 
Coda has characters talk about it, and then an entire game takes place there. Davey even stated that the door is a recurring theme, but he couldn't make the connection. Missing the point is a recurring problem for Davey, such as when he teleports the player past mazes or tells them to not bother reading all the notes as nothing special happens if they do. Though I think teleporting the player was a good call on the part of real life Davey, as it skips them past potentially tedious tasks and moves the story along while also showcasing fictional Davey's thick-headedness. Is the real Davey criticizing trying to understand people through their work, because that's what almost destroyed him? Putting himself out there in his work, and so if his work wasn't validated, then he wasn't validated? Like I said before though, I don't think that's the message. At least, not entirely. Davey takes trying to understand someone through their work to the extreme. He's so desperate to see himself reflected in Coda's games that he forces the reflection. He projects his own loneliness onto Coda, who may very well be lonely himself. The typewriters at the end of the notes game implies all the notes were coming from that one room, an admission that all the notes were written by the same person, talking to himself. And so when you find the room at the end, you're finally someone else for the person to talk to, which is why they beg you to speak to them. They're lonely. Coda might actually be letting Davy see his games because he's trying to share his feelings with someone and offload some pressure. But Davy blows it way out of proportion relative to how he feels about things, and does what he would want done and not what Coda would, and shows the games to other people. There are lots of people projecting themselves onto this game. There are people saying the game is feminist or that Coda could be transgender. Maybe it's true. Maybe it's projection. As the quote goes, We don't see things as they are. We see them as we are. There are also theories that Coda is a woman. This claim has some good evidence to back it up. All the evidence for this I actually read in a Steam thread. Whenever one of Coda's games mentions the gender of the player character, it's always female. Like in the past was always behind her game where you can only walk backwards, or the machine interrogation where the guard refers to you as ma'am. There's the crying woman in the prison you see at the end of the island game, the only detailed human model in the game, and since the player was in the prison before, it's implied that this is a past version of the player. In my favorite piece of evidence, at the end of the Whisper game it's a female voice that asks you to sacrifice yourself. Hey, you there, in the engine room. You could save us all. That beam is powering a Whisper machine. We could disrupt it by introducing a great enough heat signature. If you... your body could stop the beam. It's so much to ask, but for all of our lives, would you do it? Could you give yourself? Coda is a recluse that shows his games to no one. It's very unlikely that he asked someone to voice act for his game, especially considering it's his only game with voice acting. So then, why change the genders? Either Davey didn't know it, or maybe he changed it because they were romantically involved and he didn't want people to know. It's unlikely that Davey didn't know because they met at a game jam. Even if the game jam was online, they must have met in person because at the end of the tower, Coda says being around Davey makes her ill. Which really brings us to the biggest mystery and or plot hole of the whole game. What was Coda doing at a game jam? She's a recluse who doesn't show her games to anyone, and she made her notes game for a game jam for other people to see? I don't really have an explanation for that one. Then during the epilogue, you must be playing one of Davy's games because the tower was the last game of Coda's that Davy had access to. So the giant labyrinth that's revealed at the end, is that supposed to be Davy's mind? Is that supposed to illustrate how hard it is to navigate and understand other people? Since we're being lifted above the entire game, does it represent the mind of the real Davy? I don't know. Here's some other interesting stuff I found though. In the Whisper game, after Davy skips you through the maze, you can just turn around and figure it out if you want to. Or if you'd really like to solve the labyrinth, you're welcome to do that too. In the notes game, there's a note that says the guy over there wrote much wrong, but nobody wrote much. The notes Cabbage Shapes Our Nation and Devil Tower Star appear twice in the notes game. You can clip through boxes during the stage game. If you die five times in a row in the Mobius game, then Davey will tell you how to beat the game. Alright, let me explain how you're supposed to do this. On either side of the room are elevators, which go up to an upper level. You have to go up, walk over to the person who's standing there, and then select dialogue option number two. The six digit code in the tower can be off by one number at the end and still work.
The only flickering light in the train station is the light right before the only door that you can enter the train on. That door is the only red door, too. I guess it was made that way to draw your eye to the right area. The weird thing, though, is that the bulb itself isn't actually flickering, just the light it casts on the floor is. The fountain or centerpiece thing in the epilogue looks like it's filled with concrete, but it sounds like a metal grate when you walk on it. Also, something I'm kind of embarrassed to admit I didn't notice at all the first three times I saw the game was that Coda has three dots appear at multiple times throughout the game, almost as a signature. And something else I found in a thread is that those three dots also happen to appear in the Stanley Parable, so maybe Davey went back and added them in? I don't know if that's supposed to be some type of admission that there is no Coda and that he's the one who made all of the games and everything, but I mean, it's pretty easy to understand that through the game itself. And if your admission for one game is in a completely different game in a hard-to-find spot, that's not really much of an admission, so I'm not really sure what the point of that would be. And does any of that mean anything? Probably not. But Real Davy said in a lecture that something added incidentally in his last game became a central feature of enjoyment for those playing the game. He went along with it, as if that was its purpose all along. So who knows? Maybe the feminism or transgender theories are right. Either way, the central message is the same. Don't enslave yourself to your craving for validation. That's a problem that both Davies had to deal with. And then that summer, uh, almost a year ago, uh, or a little under a year ago, uh, he pulled me aside one day and sat me down and told me that when he was around me, when I was in the same room, that it made him feel physically ill. And you know what? I think I'll just leave it there. What else is there to say? So some of you might have a deeper reason for making games that was very similar to mine, but you'll experience it in a very different way. Because even if you don't have like a hit game or something like that, you still have this contract inside of you that tells you why you're really making whatever it is that you're making, what the deeper reason for it is. Just as it was praise and validation for me, perhaps for you it's the need to prove yourself to someone who thinks you won't make it or a self-judgment that the only people who are valuable in this world are the people who are churning out creative content all the time, or a desire to be a part of a community, to belong to a group of people who you can connect with and be inspired by, or the fan response. Do the people who play your game love it and spend hundreds of hours on it? You know, you get such a rush from that. Or winning awards, or making money. Maybe you just want to be able to support yourself financially. And of course, these are things that apply mostly to games. There are many th other things that uh, many of you are doing. Um, and maybe, you know, like me, you, you just want people to recognize you personally and tell you that they like your work, and so therefore they like you. There's always something, or multiple things. Everyone has this, whether you know it or not. You are developing and refining this reason every single day and with every single thing that you create. 